Hello and good morning, everyone. I hope you are having a great Friday morning. Um, if you're new here, hi, my name is Carly Bell and I love to get together with all of you live, usually every third Friday of the month for a machine embroidery tutorial that we do from start to finish and we call it Sip and Stitch. So I have my coffee. Um, and I'm so glad if you're here watching live, so I'm gonna check the chat real quick. Uh, please let me know if you can hear and see me okay. One major update that I have had since my last video is I finally got new internet service. <laughs> it only took a couple years of convincing uh, for my husband to convince my husband to switch services because it involved them having to drill a, into the brick of the outside of our home to get the line in. And he was not excited about that, but he finally <laughs> gave in after I told him all the trouble I was having with my internet, um, with when doing videos especially. And um, so please tell me the quality is, is super and great because <laughs> that's what I need to hear. Um, but I hope y'all are all doing good. Yay, Maggie said you can hear and see me. Congrats on the new internet. <laughs> oh, that's Delcy. Uh, congrats on the new internet. Yes, yes. Goodbye, Cox. Goodbye, Cox. Hello, AT&T. AT&T Fiber. So it's supposed to be a lot better. And just something I learned from doing videos, there's two kinds of internet. You have your download speed and your upload speed. Normally, just doing everything on the internet, download speed is important. But when you're doing videos, upload speed is what helps the video come out very clear. So hopefully that's better because <laughs> that number went up like significantly. So yay. All right. Good morning, Delia and Ellen and Sandra and Lisa and Kathy. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, Mandy's here. My neighbor. Hi from down the street. <laughs> um, so yay. I hope y'all are all doing good. So um, big apologies for y'all that were looking for me last Friday. We were supposed to have our February sip and stitch last Friday. However, my life was crazy pretty much the whole month of February. So I had to postpone it for today. So even though today is March 1st, this is our February sip, sip and stitch and we'll still have another one um, in a few weeks uh, later in March and we'll do another one. So I hope you all had a great February. We had um, both Mardi Gras and Valentine's Day, which was fun. And we went on a last minute vacation because here in New Orleans, our kids get off the whole week of Mardi Gras, actually the Friday before and then the whole week of, um, of Mardi Gras, they get off of school. So it's all, it's always works out good to get out of town that week while they're out of school. And we do a lot of Mardi Gras festivities before the actual day. Like we, we start, um, having fun the month before. <laughs> so by the time Mardi Gras weekend rolls around, we're like, okay, we're done now. So it's good to get out of town. So we had a really great trip. We went to Branson, Missouri. That was the first time I went up there. I had a few people comment when I posted on my Facebook page where I went. They're like, oh, well, you know, I was, I live in the area. I was close by. So um, it was beautiful. We loved it. The kids had a blast. And then we drove through Memphis, Tennessee on the way home. And I've always kind of been a, a, an Elvis fan. And so it was really cool to go visit Graceland. And we stayed at the hotel. Um, next to the house and, and experience the whole tour and everything. The kids got a kick out of that. So um, that was a lot of fun. So now we're back home, back in the groove of things, kids in school, soccer every night of the week. That's been lots of fun. Um, but I'm excited to get back in my craft room and start working on Easter projects. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. Um, I found some adorable Easter uh, projects. But when I put it in the um, 
which called the Facebook group asking, you know, what, what, which one did y'all like better? It was a hard choice. Um, I had a freestanding lace cross from my friend Sheila at Baby Moon Designs, and then this bunny treat bag from Embroidery Boutique. And this one was the winner of that poll. So that's what we're going to make today. Um, but here, if you can see it, it is an adorable little treat bag and it's an in the hoop project. So it's made completely um, in the embroidery machine. And um, we're going to go over the different kinds of fabrics that you can use to make this bag and all the steps from start to finish. So one thing about this particular design, so when you purchase the design, it comes in five by seven, six by 10 and eight by 12. So unfortunately, this project is not going to be four by four hoop friendly. So if you have a very small embroidery machine and your largest hoop is four by four, this one is not going to work for you. But if, if you have a five by seven hoop or larger, you'll be able to make this project. Um, that's the only limitation on this one today. So it can be made on any embroidery machine that has a five by seven hoop or larger. I will be showing you this project on my beautiful brother, Stellaire 2, which is like Cadillac of flatbed embroidery machines. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit about that machine. Um, and that's what I'm going to stitch it on. But like I said, any machine that at least has a five by seven hoop, you can make this on. So any um, questions before we get started, let me know in the comments if you're watching live. Um, if you're watching the replay later, always feel free to um, ask questions in the comments. I try to get to those um, whenever I can go through and, and answer any questions. Um, but that is the project for today. I also wanted to show you something I was very excited about. So I have a membership group. It's called the Sip and Stitch Squad VIP membership group. And in that class, in that group, we have a private Zoom class every month. And I give um, all the members a embroidery design every month. So this was our February project. So the Every Bunny Welcome applique design, that was their uh, free embroidery design for the month of February. And then our Zoom class, we took that design, stitched it, on some fabric and then made this cute little kind of burlap pillow door hanger um, out of it. So I love this. So this, I have two of them now because I, I made one before the class and then one during. So I have one hanging on my door and I think I'm gonna give this one to my mom, but I wanted to show y'all this because I love it. So cute. So I'm gonna just leave it hanging here for now. All right, so if you, are interested and stuff like that and having more classes with me and especially with the zoom classes they're so nice because we get to talk to one another and and um and you could put your camera on if you want to but you don't have to um, but it's really nice because it's it's interactive and it's a lot of fun great great group of people um that we do our classes with and um and you get those designs every month so if that's something you're interested in i believe i have a link down below to join my vip membership group it's only nine dollars a month um, it's a lot of fun. And then you get access to over about, no, it's going to be right at three years worth of past classes and embroidery designs. So every time we have a class, we record it. So if you can't come to it live, you can watch the replay. Um, so all of that's in the VIP group and it's a lot of fun. All right. So I'm going to check the chat real quick. Yay, Patty. Patty loves the VIP classes. I love, love that she comes. And uh, I think I saw your door hanger in the in the VIP Facebook group. It was super cute. All right. Doo -doo. Okay, I'm checking. Yay, Linda's excited to see more with the Stellaire. And uh, that's Delcy saying Graceland is awesome. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, so I don't see, I think, any questions about the project. So let's go ahead and jump in. And, ooh, Sandra's excited for the uh, applique getaway. Um, I officially signed up to be a vendor, like, yesterday or day before. <laughs> I was, I had to sign up by March 1st, and I am a last-minute person. Um, so I signed up the other day. So I'm officially going to be a vendor and a teacher at the applique getaway. If you don't know what that is, that is an in-person embroidery expo convention. I don't know what to call it. Um, but it's really fun. And it's in Dallas, Texas, and it happens every summer. Um, this year, it's going to be the last weekend in June. 
and they haven't opened it up for registration yet, but as soon as they do, I will tell y'all about it. I will, you know, show y'all the link and email everybody and post it on Facebook and Instagram. So if y'all want to come join me, it'll be a lot of fun. And then Ashley has a question. Okay. So is the PE 800 a good starter embroidery machine? Yes. That is what I started with. I actually started with an older version of it. It's called the PE770. Then they updated it a little bit, renamed it. The new model was PE800. They've actually since then updated it again. And the newest model is the PE900. The basic features of the machine are the same. And that is it has a five by seven hoop. I, I judge machines based on their hoop size. Um, upgrading means bigger hoop size. You get lots, some, you know, features and bells and whistles with upgrades, but the main important thing is hoop size. So that's what I started with. It all depends on what kind of projects you want to make with your embroidery machine. That's going to determine what hoop size you should buy. Um, five by seven was great for me. I had babies, did a lot of baby projects, lots of cute little in the hoop things like keychains and, and, uh, little zippered bags, all kinds of fun stuff. So lots of things you can make in a five by seven hoop. And if that's within your budget, it's a great place to start. And then if you fall in love with it, like I did, you might want to upgrade to a bigger machine later. But yes, a great starter machine. All right, let's see. Do, do, do. Okay. All right, Mandy's like, road trip. Yay, Mandy, you could come to Dallas with me. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Um, oh no, Kathy saying I'm frozen on her end. Refresh your screen, Kathy, and let me know if that makes it better. Everybody else let me know too, because I was really hoping that my quality, the video quality was good today. Um, okay. Brenda has a question. What is the main difference between the Stellaire and the Luminaire? So the Luminaire is brother's like top flatbed machine. And the Stellar is right underneath it. And the main difference for me is hoop size. My Stellar, the biggest hoop, it is nine and a half by 14. For the Luminaire, you get 10 and a half by 16. So that is the largest embroidery field on any brother machine. It's bigger than even the multi-needle machines. My Stellar has a hoop that is bigger than my multi-needle machines. Um, so Big thing there is the hoop. And then also the Luminaire has some fancy camera features. It actually has a camera that can scan your hoop. And I want to say it has a projection feature as well, where it can, you load your design and it will project it down onto it. So someone with a Luminaire can confirm that for me. I think that's what it does. I've never owned one and I haven't played with one, but I know they're fantastic. <laughs> um, and one other limitation with them is you actually have to go to a brother dealer quilt shop, someone who is an authorized brother seller um, in order to purchase a Luminaire. A Stellaire, you don't have to do that. You can purchase it online. And I get all my machines from sewingmachinesplus.com and they're in California. So I get them online and they ship them to me. Um, so that's easier for me because there is one brother dealer in town, but I've found that the online prices, sewing machines plus prices are usually better than the dealers. Um, so that's something that you have to judge on, you know, what's important to you. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and get started. Okay, Sherry's telling me that the video is excellent. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> I need that reassurance. Okay, let me move my keyboard and mouse. And let's look at the craft table. Okay, so this is what we're making today. I'm gonna keep my eye on the chat while I'm working, but if I miss a question, um, I'm gonna stop periodically through today's tutorial. And if I missed your question and I say, okay, I can ask, uh, I can answer questions now, just go ahead and retype it for me because that helps me a lot to keep me from scrolling up and down in the chat. Um, then, okay, so this is the project we're making today. The design is from Embroidery Boutique. I have a link directly to the, the, to the design for you down below um, the video, whether you're watching on Facebook or on uh, what YouTube. Then I wanna tell you also a great place to get information on everything I do 
is you see it scrolling at the bottom of the screen now. It's the Sip and Stitch homepage. So it's on my website, carlybell.com. You'll see in the menu at the top a Sip and Stitch option. If you're on your phone, you'll see the three little stacked lines. If you click that, that opens up the menu at the top. Um, but that every week, I'll update that with the newest project. And then when you scroll down, it shows you all the previous projects. I am in the process of getting someone to help me clean up that page and make it a lot easier to navigate, especially for those of y'all that are watching replays of really old sip and stitches <laughs> and having to scroll and find the supply list for that video. But all the newest ones are going to be at the top and on there, they'll have a link directly to the design and then all the supplies that I use. Okay. So keep that in mind whenever you um, are looking for information. And I do put a lot as well in the boxes under the videos. Um, so you can find things there. So this is the five by seven bunny. I'm going to make that again today because I think it's the perfect size to put a few treats in and either give to put in your kids' Easter baskets or grandkids. And then if you have all those nieces and nephews and cousins and, um, you know, your kids have, uh, you know, a group um, that they're involved in a sport and you want to just give them a little something, this stitches out. I want to say, we'll see it when I get to my machine in like six minutes. It's super fast. So you can make a bunch of these um, and then just fill them with candy. And it's a nice little keepsake. Like you can keep, they can keep this on their um, a shelf or a dresser. We're going to personalize it with its name. So I'm going to show you how to do this part as well. Um, so this is the design. If you want to personalize it, you are going to need an embroidery font. And then we have some options for software, but I'm going to be showing you how to do it in, in, um, in Brilliance Essentials. And I'm also want to tell you all about the new font stuff that they came out with actually yesterday. We'll talk about that as well. So the design. Okay, then as far as materials go of what you can use to make this, um, the examples on Embroidery Boutique's website was um, Minky, and, and especially the Minky that has the little fuzzy um, textured balls on them. So I did that for my first one. Um, today, I have some smooth Minky. Um, I got this from Hobby Lobby, but um, if you have a quilt shop that sells Shannon fabrics, they have really nice um, Minky that comes in a variety of colors and this is smooth and then they have some called Lux, which is really, really fluffy. So fun stuff like that. So I'm using Minky. I think this bunny would also be really cute with fleece. I've purchased a, a bundle of white fleece from Walmart before and I think they've had it in different colors. That would also be nice or even um, flannel or felt. So I think all those things would work well. Um, as far as woven cotton, like your, your traditional, like the most fabric I have in my craft room is, is um, cotton woven. Um, I think it would work for this, but there is a hole that you'll see. I have this one just stuffed with stuffing right now, but there is a hole and this hole is raw. So you will have a raw edge here. So just keep that in mind if you are going to use um, woven cotton. Uh, I think even um, knit cotton would also be super cute for this and soft and stretchy. Um, so play around with it. You could probably use all different kinds of materials to make this. So pick whatever you want to use to start. I have a piece of ribbon here because that's what I use to, to tie the ears together once they're done. Um, so your fabric, I'm using my five by seven hoop, but like I said, it does come in larger sizes. I'm using um, tear away stabilizer. I like the Stay Perfect brand. So I'm using that. And then I have my little tools here. I have my applique scissors, some tweezers, and this is a stiletto I like to use to hold things in place. So, oh, other um, thing that I'm using is water soluble topper. And I'm going to show you when we put that on to help the stitches from sinking down into the minky. So anything fluffy, water soluble topper helps a lot. I think that's everything. <laughs> it never fails that I'll like, I'll go through all my supplies and do it. And then as, as we're stitching, I'll remember something that I forgot earlier. So that is that. So to start, all we need to do is hoop 
one piece of tearaway stabilizer. So I'm gonna pull this out. All right, so I have my bottom hoop, my stabilizer, my top hoop. Whenever you're working with flatbed hoops, you always wanna make sure the little arrow, sorry, the little arrow at the top of your hoop matches the arrow on the bottom hoop so that you know you have it in the right direction. So that's for all our newbie friends that are just getting into embroidery. Make sure you have your hoop on right, in the right direction. You'll notice my hoops for the Stellaire Air have these registration marks because there is a special app with the Stellaire Air that I can use and actually use my phone with the app to take a picture of my hoop and then it will go to my machine so that I can make sure whatever design I'm stitching, the placement is right where I want it. So if I'm hooping a shirt or a particular piece of fabric that has a pattern and I want the embroidery design to go in a certain spot, you can move it around within the picture to make sure it stitches right where you want it. So that's a nice feature of the Stellaire. And then the Luminaire, like we were talking about before, has an actual camera on it and it will scan it after you hoop it, after you have it in the machine. Okay, so any questions about supply? So I see Lisa um, said where I got my minky from. So this pink minky I got from Hobby Lobby. I think this one that they had at Hobby Lobby and Joann's. Um, and then if you have a quilt shop that had carries Shannon fabrics, they have beautiful minkies. Okay. Claudia is asking, do I have written instructions? So actually the, the place where I purchased the embroidery design, which is um, Embroidery Boutique, it comes with PDF instructions with it as well. So if you like to have a piece of paper or your computer screen open as you're stitching to make sure you're doing all the steps right, um, you have that PDF comes with the design. And then what I'm providing today is more of just a, a real true visual of you seeing someone stitch it out. Okay. So now that we have this um, hooped, I'll tell you just quickly. So the first couple steps of the design, it, it stitches very fast. So I'm going to spend a little time on Embrilliance um, because I think we have time today. Because um, for, for those of y'all that watch me a lot, y'all know I can turn a very short project into a very long video because I talk a lot. Um, but I think we have time to dive into Embrilliance today because I got a lot of fun stuff I want to tell you. But the first stitch is going to show you where to put your minky, and that's called the placement stitch. Then you'll have the tack down stitch to actually tack it down. It'll stitch out the face. You'll want to stitch out your name. And then the last step is adding the back to it. And that's the cool, cool part about in the hoop projects that we can make. And I'll show you how to do all that. But before we go over to the machine, let me tell you a little bit about the program that I use to add the name to it. So first I wanna tell you, you have a few options. Okay, if you don't have computer software, um, embroidery computer software, you can open this design on your machine. Um, and usually most machines will allow you to add a name to that design. So that is an option using the fonts on your machine already. Um, the program I like to use is called Embrilliance Essentials. Um, and that is a basic embroidery software editing program that allows you to open embroidery design so you could actually see them on your computer, see all the steps. They even have a little preview screen to show you how it stitches out exactly. But then it gives you a lot of editing capabilities like merging several designs together, opening the bunny design and using lettering tools to add um, a name to it or any kind of personalization. Um, and one of the things that they came out with yesterday is an update to one of their, um, I call it like an add-on to Essentials, it's called Alpha Tricks. Um, and that allows you to organize and use fonts within in Brilliance Essentials um, a lot easier. So that was a major update yesterday. I'm gonna show you that in the program. And then another thing they put for sale as a brand new item um, yesterday was a new font collection. So there are several font collections that in Brilliance sells. Um, I personally haven't purchased any of them before. They look really nice, but I have tons of fonts that I've purchased online before. However, the one they came out with yesterday, I really needed. <laughs> and I'll show it to you and you can decide if it's something you love. But like as soon as I saw it, I was like, I need this in my life. Um, 
The cool thing about Embrilliance fonts is that they are native, which means you can resize them as much as the program will allow you. Normally, we buy a one-inch font. You can tweak it and resize it a smidge, but I can't turn it into a five-inch font. That's, that's not happening. Um, but with native fonts, they give you that. It does, recalculates all the stitches um, so that you can resize them. So this new font collection from Embrilliance is native. It's six new fonts. The really cool thing is that it came with 316 envelopes. So let me show it to you real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, my computer is going to look crazy for a second. Okay, this is the Embrilliance website. This is where I got my program from. So I have Essentials. I have all of these actually. <laughs> I have a problem, but Essentials is the great one just to start with. And um, this is the new font collection that they released yesterday. So I think if I click on this, it'll bring you to the sale page. Okay, so it comes with six new fonts. So these are all the fonts. Ernest, Joplin, LaGrange, Mint, T, Tannerite, and Cider. So they, they all look a little different if you can see. But the really cool thing is that you see all, how all these fonts are put together. Those are done with something called envelopes. And it comes with 316 ready to use envelopes. So that was exciting. And if you have a little girl right now that loves Taylor Swift, this is a really trendy look with a lot of Taylor Swift stuff. Um, but I love that the amount of patches that I think we could make with this is is exponential. <laughs> That's what I see a lot of. And then look at this cute little keychain. They did it on a mug rug. And I love this one. This is a Valentine's um, one. How cute is that? So lots of capability. So I bought that yesterday and I'm going to use one of these today on the bunny I stitch out. Um, Alpha Tricks is something that allows you to manage your fonts easier. Um, and I'll have to do a whole nother video on that, but I'm going to show you the newest feature that they added, which is a font manager. So if you are like me and have tons of embroidery fonts already installed on your um, essentials uh, program, this is going to make your life a lot easier. All right. So that is the Embrilliance website. I have links to that down below. I'm an affiliate for them. So I have um, links. So if you are interested in getting any of that, I really appreciate you using uh, my link. All right, now let's get into um, Embrilliance. So let's show you the bunny. Okay, oh, I can't see comments while I'm in this screen. So as soon as I'm done with this, I, I'll ask you if you um, have any questions. So maybe wait to post your questions when I ask because I can't see anything while I'm in here. Okay, so this is the bunny design. I added... Elise Evelyn on there. So let's see if I just drag this off to the side. Um, this is what the design is going to look like when you open it. And then you can add some personalization um, to the bottom here if you want. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to make a new one. I need to find the bunny. Where's the bunny? There we go. So when you buy it, it comes in folders with all the different um, embroidery formats. So you just pick the one that works with your machine. I have a brother, so PES works. This is that um, instructional PDF it comes with, and then a little picture of what the finished product project looks like. But when I open PES, I have three size options. So I can either just double click this and it will open in here, or I, I like to drag and drop. So now it's it's there. Um, so you can see on the side here all the steps, and I can click on them just to you know know ahead of time how this project's going to stitch out. I have a placement that's going to be a tack down stitch. Notice there's nothing here that's going to allow you to have that hole. The eyes, the nose, the whiskers, and then this is the last stitch that attaches the back to it. Um, whenever you're doing in the hoop projects and you're adding personalization, you want your name to be you want your personalization to happen before the last step. You don't want your personalization to be the last step because then it's kind of too late. It needs to be bef 
before the last step. And I'll show you some important things with that. Um, but as far as adding a lettering design in Brilliance, it's super easy. Um, I use BX fonts, which whenever I purchase a font online, it'll come in all those embroidery formats like I showed you here. But most of the embroidery fonts I purchase will also come in a BX format, which that is what works. That's specific for Brilliance. So I can install them just by dragging and dropping like I did my design. And so then when I open up my lettering tool and I go here, all of the BX fonts that I've ever purchased will show up here. And now you can see where I have a problem, right? <laughs> I have a ton of them. And fonts that are not native, like we talked about the difference with native, um, they will come in a variety of sizes. So this is a 0.5 inch, three quarter inch font, and it goes all the way up to a 6.5 inch font. You see how big that is? Um, so I'm gonna have the same font is gonna have multiple places to click because it's based on the size and I can see all that here. So some, some fonts come in a large range. Some will come with just, you know, five or six um, sizes, like usually 0.5 to two inch, I would say is a standard. Um, so that is, BX fonts and how we find them. Now, I just bought the new ACE font package. So let me scroll up. They're all named ACE. So these are the six new fonts um, that I bought yesterday. And this is the one I liked for Elise. So I'm going to click it. There it is. Now I can put my text um, and hit enter. So this font looks like it's only capital letters. So even though I typed lowercase here, it's all capital and I can then move it where I want because it is native. You saw there was only one option there. There's also no little needle picture here. That's another thing that shows you it's native, but I can make this font as big um, or as little as it will let me. So that's the smallest it will let me. If I keep trying to bring it down, it doesn't. So the computer, the program will, you know, let you know its limitations, but the, the size increase is humongous. Uh, I think that's as big as it can be. Um, so that looks like four, four and a half ish um, tall. So it has a nice range. So I can do this and be done. But because I got the that package that came with all those envelopes to make all the cool shapes. I, I did that for this design. And I'm going to show you what that looks like and how you get it. So I'm going to delete this. And to get to your envelopes, you go to this button here, merge design from the library, because envelopes are in your library. And when you buy in Brilliance Essentials, it's going to come with some frames um, and then as you add things you'll get more um, these are envelopes that came with in brilliance but i'm looking at the ace rewind one so uh i love these they're so cute and there's so many fun things that we can do with this so they have heart these are they're based on how many lines there are and what shape the overall design makes so we got a heart a hexagon circle oval, rectangle, square, and then it goes into three lines and then they have different shapes. And then they have four lines, different shapes, and then more fun shapes. So all kinds. Of, oh, I like the dimes. I've seen this one before. Um, but yeah, they got some fun ones. Uh, and then stackable. So these are where you could kind of create your own thing. So for Elise, I was going to do her first and middle name. So two lines and I liked the rectangle and I think I picked this one, but you see we have lots of cute options and I'm gonna hit okay. So when that happens, you'll see all these things pop up. We have the envelope, which is the shape. And then we have the text that goes inside the envelope. So what I will do is click the text and change it to Elise hit enter and I click out and now you see it's like this. 
and then E V E L Y N Evelyn. That's her middle name. There. So now it's created this. So um, this was the look that I I thought was super cute. You can also change the font. So if I want to use one of the other fonts, I haven't played around with it as far as um, choosing fonts that are not these. I'll have to play with that and see how it how it works out. Let's see. Let's try this one. Yeah. So we'll see what the limitations are as far as using fonts that are not native. Um, but for now, I'm sticking with the Joplin. I like that font a lot. One thing when I was playing with it this morning, I want to resize this, right? You want to make sure you have everything selected when you resize. Or no, you want to have the, um, the envelopes selected. So I clicked here and that got both of them. And now I can shrink this and move it. So, and I can play with this as much or as little as I want. If I want it to be a little bit bigger, you know, just play around with this and then move it. But make sure you have all the envelopes selected when you're doing this, not the letters, because I, I played around with moving the letters and then it, it messed everything up. <laughs> um, but, okay, so that is it as far as me adding the name. I think it needs, I made it a little bit smaller there. I went out, it went, I messed it up, I think, when I did something. Okay, so this is what the one on my machine looks like, I think. Um, and the only thing that I changed, because remember within the hoop projects, you want your personalization to stitch before the last step. Um, and in order to do that, I need to click here and here. So I can do it in in brilliance and move it right where I want it, or you can do it on your machine. And when you get to this step, jump ahead, skip this one, stitch this out when it's done, then back up to this step. So that's an easy route. If you want to do it in in brilliance itself, have all of this selected and I'm just going to move it right there. And when I do it, you see it kind of breaks up this part from this part. Now, one thing that I learned, I didn't have some settings right before. There's been times where I've saved this and sent it to my machine and it looked all wonky. The first step didn't stitch out like it was supposed to. So one thing you have to make sure you have done. So in your preference window, go to jumps and overlaps. Make sure you don't have this selected. Um, and Brilliance has the capability of removing um, hidden stitches or overlapping stitches um, so that, you know, if you don't want your project to be too dense, you can remove the stitches underneath. So if I had something, you know, underneath her name, it would remove those stitches wherever her letters were, which is helpful in some cases. But I don't want my program to automatically do that every time I save a design. So I uncheck this because you see these three steps, they're all the same exact thing. They're all right on top of each other. So if it removes hidden stitches, you pretty much wouldn't have anything on this first step. So I hope that makes sense to you because that was a problem for me in the past. Okay, so then we would go to file, save stitch file as, save it to your USB stick, or you can send it wirelessly by going to utility and Wi-Fi. Um, there, they have to be on the same Wi-Fi network and then you can send it to your machine. So now I'm going back to the chat and let me know all your questions. <laughs> and what I'll do is we'll start setting this up and letting it start stitching. And then I can answer questions while it's stitching because I know that's a lot. And brilliance is a lot for people. Um, sometimes it's, it's very overwhelming. I do have in the works right now and in brilliance essentials course, which is going to break everything down for you, show you the features in short but detailed um, video lessons so that like when it's time for you to do a design and you don't remember about the hidden stitches thing, they'll have a lesson 
specifically on hidden stitches that you could go and remind yourself on. So I'm working on that right now, trying to make it to where it's structured really nice and easy to follow. Um, so stay tuned for that. I think I have a, um, a sign up for the wait list link below the video. So if you're interested in that, what signing up for the wait list does is just put your name on a list. And as soon as the course is available, I will email you and say, hey, the course is available. So you're not committing to anything. It's just making sure that you are notified when the course is open. All right. Now, so y'all put your questions in the chat if you have anything about all the stuff I just went over. I know it was a lot. Um, and I'm going to go hook this up to the machine. So let me show you my machine. Um, this is my brother Stellaire too. Um, I saw someone mention earlier something I forgot to mention um, about both the Stellaire and the Luminaire. I'm not sure. The Stellaire comes in two versions. One is an embroidery only machine. It's just an embroidery machine. The other version is what I have is a sewing embroidery combo. Um, so it, this works both as a sewing and embroidery machine. And it has Disney um, preloaded designs and they have something called My Design Center, which is really cool, um, where you can create things on here, especially like quilting, really cool for quilting. So I can do all these things. I can change my presser foot to a sewing one. Um, I have the option of taking the embroidery unit off. I also have the option of when I press sewing and I say, okay, it just moves this all the way out the way. So I have all of this space to sew. So I don't have to take this off if, if it's a pain in the butt like it is on my table here because um, I have way too many things on here. I can't take this off easily. <laughs> but we're doing embroidery today. So I'm gonna go okay. And it's gonna move this back to where it should be. And I have my design. Okay, it looks right. I was worried that the name didn't look right. But let me do this. Okay. I click my design and there's my bunny with my groovy Elise Evelyn um, name written on it. And I'm going to hit set. And I can see all the steps. There's the nose, the whiskers, the name, then the last step. So I got everything in the right order. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the first step. Okay. I'm um, just double checking that I had everything saved right. And I hit embroidery and it's ready to go. So the first step is the placement stitch. You can stitch this in any color you want. It's gonna be hidden. So I'm gonna put the presser foot down and hit go. And I'm gonna go check my computer for all the questions. Oops, what's wrong? Is it not threaded? It is. Uh, maybe I'm out of bobbin. Do I press your foot and cut? So it's just check, telling me to check my upper threading. I see nothing actually stitched here. I have a full bobbin. Let me rethread the bobbin. Pull it out, make sure it's going counterclockwise. Pull it through the thread path. I always like to pull a lot <laughs> through to make sure the tension is set right. And this all looks right. It's threaded. Okay, so I missed a couple stitches here, so I'm gonna back up. So I'm gonna press the needle minus plus button and go back to the beginning of this. Okay, lower presser foot, go. Nope, is it? Yes? Nope, there it goes. The first few stitches didn't check, didn't catch, but now it's stitching. I don't care about these because this is just a placement stitch. So I must, something might, must have not felt right with the bobbin, but now it's right. So I'm not going to worry about that. It's showing me where to put my fabric. Okay. Now the Luminaire, I want to say it, it, there's only one option, right? Is the sewing and embroidery. 
I don't think they have an embroidery only luminaire. That's a question for somebody that has, has one of those machines. <laughs> okay. Um, Paula axes on embroilians. Do you need to keep the hidden stitches off all the time? I personally do. I leave it off all the time and because it's much less likely of when I'm going to use it. So, um, I will, there's a button you can press within embroilians on the toolbar at the top to remove hidden stitches. So when I want to do it, I just press that button. Um, and then save it, or I'll go turn that feature on before I save it. But more, most of the time, I do a lot of in the hoop projects, so I don't want that feature to be on. Okay. Um, Sandra says, I have to pace myself. Yes, uh, with buying all the Inverlians programs. Um, I have a blog post on my website. So if you go to carlybell.com and in the menu under embroidery and basics, I have a whole post on all of the embroilians programs. So if they're confusing to you, you can see them all. And then I'm going to go over all of them in the course. Um, but yes, I've been collecting embroilians programs um, for years. I think I've, I, I owned essentials for years before I finally like up got the, um, I think the first thing I got was enthusiast. And then I got stitch artists, which is a digitizing software. Enthusiast is like advanced editing, lots of cool features with that one. And then, um, stitch artists is digitizing. Then I got all those. And then I bought alpha tricks actually I want to say a year or more ago, and I never really played with it. Oh, I forgot to show you the font manager. Okay, we can go back and do that. But now that this new feature came out, I'm going to go play with my alpha tricks more. Okay, so I'm cutting a piece of minky that is a little bit bigger than my stitch out. And I actually need two pieces of minky that are the same size. So while I have this here, I have a little template to go off of. I'm going to cut my second piece so that it's ready to go when I need it. Okay, so two pieces of minky, a little bit bigger than your thing. I keep all my minky in Ziploc bags. This is a yard, I think, or half a yard. I think I got a yard of each one, but it fits in a gallon Ziploc bag because it sheds like crazy. So then I'll, I'll keep a, um, a lint roller handy. So when all the fuzz starts going everywhere, like it's on, it's on here now, <laughs> I, I scoop it up with my lint roller. Um, okay. So the placement stitch is done. Now I'm going to put this here. Now is also the time you want to add your water soluble topping. So I'm going to cut a piece of that. And this is going to lay right on top. I don't need it. I can cut, I can trim this off the bottom and save this for a smaller project later. Okay, so that is there. So now we're gonna go back to the machine and it's gonna do what's called the tack down stitch. And that's just gonna do pretty much your outline of your bunny again, okay? But now we have our both our minky and our water soluble topper. So let's go back to the machine and then I'll come back to more questions. Again, this stitch really doesn't matter what color thread you use. So I still have this tealy color thread on there. This is the color I'm going to use for the eyes and the name. So I'm just leaving that on there. Um, so this is the tack down stitch. If you're using super fluffy fabric, um, your presser foot might drag on top the fabric. So that's when the little stiletto comes in handy just to make sure everything is staying where it should and doesn't like wrinkle up. 
um, on your more updated, upgraded machines. So I know my PE 800 did not do this, but my next bigger machine, the NQ 1700, the one that has a six by 10 hoop, it has the ability to raise the presser foot height while you're embroidering. So if you're embroidering on thick, fluffy things, you can raise this up a smidge so that it's not dragging on top of your fabric. Um, I find for this first step, I don't need to do that. But when we do the last step, it helps if I raise it a little bit. Um, next step is the eyes that I'm doing in this teal color. And then the step after that is the nose. So I'm going to do that in this brighter pink. Okay. I told you this stitches out really quick. So it's hard for me to even come back here and look at questions. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, uh, Mandy asked a question. So on my machine, it's showing the bunny name being like red and the nose being black, the eyes being red. I'm loading whatever color I want. Now, Mandy has a six needle um, embroidered machine. She's got the six needle brother. So for her, she's just gonna make sure she has the colors loaded. And when she goes and tells the machine, hey, for step one, use this needle, which has you know white thread attached to it or pink thread attached to it. She's gonna go and tell her machine every step which needle to use. You don't have to use the colors that are showing on my screen. Okay, so that's the eyes. Um, next is the nose. I'm gonna do the nose in pink. So I like to cut my thread and pull it through the thread path, not pull it out backwards every time I change. And I don't know if you can see up here, but I have a thread, it's a vertical thread stand. It's much better than all the other thread holders on my brother machines. Oh, wait, wrong button. I was supposed to press thread the needle, not start stitching. <laughs> Let me wait for that to finish. Okay, pull it through the thread path. Now I thread the needle. This has the best needle threader by far of any of the machines I have. Um, so that is there. And let me back up. Back to the beginning of this step. I use this needle plus minus button all the time and pretty much everything I stitch because I'm always making little mistakes or something happens and I need to back up or simple things like that where I need to start over that particular step. So become familiar with this button and playing with the features in it. Um, okay, lower the presser foot. This is the bunny nose. All right. Let's see. I'm scrolling through the comments. Let's see. All right, Claudia has a good question. Do I change the bobbin color as well? No. For this project, I don't. Some in the hoop projects, I do change the bobbin color thread to match the top because it is visible. This is not showing. Um, this is going to get turned when we're done. So it's going to be like a typical sewing project where your seams are hidden. So you're not going to see your bobbin thread. So with almost all of my embroidery projects, with the exception of certain in the hoop ones, I use a 90 weight bobbin thread, um, a white bobbin thread. It doesn't match my top color because you'll see, I'll turn this over and show you when we're done, but you'll see you, you there's no bobbin thread showing on top. It's only the color. You should only see the bobbin thread from the back. All right, the next step is the whiskers, which are black. I'm doing black, you can do whatever color you want. White would also be cute or gray. Let's do gray, like a silvery gray. Let me find, let me go get a different spool of thread. Like this one, this would be cuter instead of that harsh black being on the, the pink minky. Let's do that. Okay, pull the pink out. the gray in. Thread the needle this time. Okay, 
these are the little whiskers. Okay, so I hope that answered your question, Claudia. I don't change the bobbin thread usually. I keep it that white one. Um, okay. All right, Cindy answered the question for me. New, no combo only. Um, so it Luminaire is combo only. There's not just an embroidery only vision, uh, version. Thank you, Cindy, for answering that. Um, okay, I'm scrolling up to look. Okay, so Erica asks, where in the world does everyone get BX font? Um, I can tell you like some of my favorite places just to give you a place to start. Designs by Juju has an excellent collection. Creative Appliques has beautiful fonts. Um, I'm also a big embroidery boutique where I got the little bunny from, has some super cute fonts. Um, let's see, Applique Alley has some cute fonts there. They have more applique fonts, but they do have some really cute regular satin stitch or bean stitch fonts. Um, and I'm sure our friends on here can tell you a bunch, but those are, start there. Designs by Juju. Um, Creative appliques. Um, what's the other one? People like Stitchtopia. There's there's a lot. Start there. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, Terry's saying she bought the Ace yesterday. Haven't figured out how to update Alpha Tricks. I wanted to show you that too because I keep forgetting things that I want to do while I'm on the computer with y'all. Um, so the whiskers are done. And next is Elise's name, which I'm gonna do in this teal color. Thread the needle. Okay, so now we're we're stitching her name in the new font. So this is the first time I'll stitch anything with these fonts. And that's what um, Terry is talking about. So really quick, let me go back to the Embrilliance website. And I'm going to show you what to do. Uh, crazy. Okay, so I'm back at the Embrilliance website. If you already have Alphatrix, you purchased it in the past like me, and you want to um, get the new update, right? Your program doesn't update automatically. You have to go update it. So you can find out which, and all the updates are free. So remember that. So with a lot of other um, design softwares, you purchase a version. And when they come out with a new version, they, you usually have to pay for that update. I love in Brilliance and that you don't have to do that. So I can go to in Brilliance and go to About and Brilliance, and it will tell me which version I have, and that's the newest one, 1.176. If you have something less than this, like 1.175, I think is what I had before, that means you need an update. So you go, it's very simple. I don't need to uninstall anything. I don't need to do anything to my program. I just need to go to the in Brilliance website, and up here, Downloads right here, you see in Brilliance platform, one download, you just add serial numbers. So when you purchase essentials, you'll get a serial number. When you purchase enthusiasts, you'll get a serial number, stitch artists, alpha tricks, density repair kit, and the fonts and Merrily, that's the patches program. Um, so every time I buy something, so if I log in and go to my account, I could see what I bought and I could see the serial number for all of them. And to download this, anyone could go download it, but the programs won't work unless you have the serial number. So you come to the downloads page and right here, they have versions for Windows, a newer Mac um, computers and older Mac computers. And one of our friends in the Facebook group, unfortunately had a operating system less than 10.9, so she can't um, date it. So this one says 1.175, yeah. Um, so this is the newer one, 1 1.76, whether you have Windows or, or Mac. So all you're going to do is come here. And I clicked, I think I clicked on this one, but I think it doesn't matter. Um, you click on this 
it's going to go to your downloads folder. Where am I here? When did I download it? The other day? Look, it looks like this. And all I do is double click this and it goes into the little program and you just click OK like five times. And then it will tell you maybe if you have e Essentials open already, you might need to close it and just reopen it. And when you reopen it, it will be updated and you can double check it by going here and say, OK, I have the update. Sometimes you can't even tell because the, the changes are so slight. So the change with Alpha Tricks, when you go to your font, make a new font, look right here. This is a new button that wasn't there before. That, ooh, why are you way over here, is your font manager. And so this is what I have to play with. I watched Lisa Shaw posted, and in Brilliance posted a video last night on things you can do, which is you can add tags. It shows you all the designers. So there's two different kinds. There's native, which we talked about, and then regular BX fonts, which they call imported. And it will show you all the places I bought stuff from. So here's like Creative Applique. And these are all the fonts that I've bought from Creative Applique. It didn't look like this before, though. I thought it said the name. Here's Designs by Juju, Embroidery Font. Why they look like, but th there's all of them, right? So the first thing I think I'm going to do, if I look at all, all my fonts, is I'm going to go tag ones that are applique, ones that are script, and ones that are not script. I don't know what word I'm going to use for that. But Lisa Shaw just came out with a video showing us how to add tags. And I want to say what we do. We go here, add a tag. So if I wanted to write applique, all right, that's my tag. I have that now. So now when I scroll, look at all of these are applique. So if I do shift, select all of those and drag them to applique, they now have the tag applique. So when I click applique, they're all going to show up. So I can keep doing that until I have all of my applique fonts tagged. So here are these, drag to applique, boom. So they're gonna be in there now. So those are the fun things we can do with the new font manager. All right, let me stop there so I'm not confusing people more and more. We just finished stitching Elise's name. Let me go back to the chat. Okay, so we went over how you update in Brilliance if you already bought Alpha Tricks and you want to get that new font manager, and then just a little peek into the actual font manager. All right, so Elise's name is Stitch. Look how cute it is. Isn't that cute? Can y'all see? Am I holding it right? I love that. That's so cute. Now, let's look at the back. Let's talk about Bob and Thread. You see with her name, you see the tealy color on the outline, and you see the white Bob and Thread on the middle. That's how it should look. You, it should be like a column, th three columns, a third on the outside, bobbin in the middle, and then your outside, your top color on the outside. So let's go back to the craft table because we have something we have to do before we stitch the last step. All right, let me pick up my mess. All right, this part. I wasn't paying attention the first time I did it. So I made a little boo-boo. So I'm gonna tell you about it in case you do it too. Before we do the last step, and what the last step is, is taking your second piece of minky and putting it right sides together. And it's gonna stitch the outline again. Okay, that's what the last step is. But we wanna remove this water soluble topper before we do that. Now, I just did this. And as soon as I pulled here, my whole, stitching came out under here and actually tore my tear away <laughs> even though I wasn't ready so you want to be gentle and hold this down with removing the tear away I wasn't holding this so like all of this came up so be gentle however it's an easy fix if you do accidentally tear your stabilizer on the back what I did was I I got another piece 
and I cut it and I kind of patched the little tear area I made and I taped it. So then they still had to stabilize underneath that. So that's what I did the other day when I made this bunny. I just kind of patched the little hole that I made. As long as, it, as long as it doesn't come unhooped completely, you can save it by patching that little spot. But be warned now, be careful when you're pulling the water soluble up that you don't actually pull your minky up with it and tear the stabilizer. Okay, so once you get the outside, and it kind of just rips right on the stitch line. It's pretty easy. Now, you might have some left over in the letters here. We can clean that up after. You don't have to worry about cleaning that up now. Okay, so we got most of it out. All right, so now that we have that out, now we take our second piece of minky, right sides together, and we put it. So now you can see it's a little bit thick now. We got two pieces of minky. This minky's on the thin side, but if you're using thicker minky, this is when the presser foot might start dragging. And when it drags, it might pull your fabric with it like that. So if you can raise your presser foot height, this is a good time to do it. Um, or I stay there with my stiletto and watch and make sure nothing drags if you can't raise your presser foot height. Okay, so let's go back to the machine. And if you've never done it before, the presser foot height information. Oop, I can't move my camera. The, the cord is, yeah, the cord's pulling. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to get closer to the screen. Oh, I do have a zoom. That might be easier. Okay, let me show you how to raise the presser foot height. So you go to settings, and even though my stitch file is open, I can still do this without messing anything up or deleting my thing. So I go to settings. Look, usually it looks like a little piece of paper with a folded corner. And depending on what kind of machine you have is how many settings options it has. And they usually have some arrows and goes between different pages. For my Stellaire, page seven is the one with embroidery foot height. So it says it, it shows a cute little picture, you know, re, you know, reinforcing this is this is what I'm changing the height between my fabric and the underside of my presser foot the default is 0 0.060 I know it's the default because you see how it's highlighted in black and this is going to be on all brother and baby lock machines if you ever go and play with your settings and you change something see how it's not highlighted in black anymore and then I'm like oh man I really want to put it back to how it was before or the factory settings, I can just keep changing it until I see that black box come back. And then I'm like, okay, I know this is my, my default um, number or position or height, whatever the case may be. So that's the default. I'm going to go up to 0.14. Let's just do that. Okay. All right. That brings me back to my design. Now, let me put my camera back where it was. Okay, so now when I lower my presser foot, it's not really digging and dragging in my fabric. Okay, and so the last step is just the outline again. Um, so presser foot is down. I, I'm leaving that same thread color on there. Um, if you wanted to change it to a color that matches your minky, um, you can do that as well. Um, I didn't see any thread when I when when the seams are done. But see, I don't even really need my stiletto right now because it's not dragging anything. I just make sure it's all nice and smooth. But this comes in handy when you can't move your presser foot height. So it's gonna go through it twice. Oop, 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 we got some nesting going on. So I heard, I could hear the sound, how it, it's different. And then I could see some, some stuff going on here. So I stopped my machine. Don't ever be afraid to just stop it in the middle of stitching. You can always go back to where you were. So I stopped it. I'm a cut because something happened here. You see, it can't even cut right now. Okay, it's all looped and entangled. Can y'all see that? No. 
Let me get closer. So little things happened all the time. So I have this problem here. I'm going to cut. Looks like it's going through twice. I can't tell. Okay. Cut all these threads. We're going to re-thread the needle because something's not right. Let me get my tweezers. Okay, so there's my thread. This all looks right, so I'm just gonna re-thread it. Oh wait, I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to run it through here. Okay, now I can re-thread it. Okay, so the top is good and done. Now I can see all of this happening. And Depending on what kind of project this is, if this is satin stitching, you know, you really don't want loops in your satin stitching. Um, so what I would do is I would try to cut out as much as I could. Now this is going to be stitching that's not seen, but it also helps keep our bag together. So we want it to be good and secure. I'm going to check underneath the hoop to see if I had some nesting going on. I don't know how zoomed in I am. You can see all this. Okay. Um, yeah, you can see all of this knotting. I'm gonna go ahead and cut because I don't want it to catch on it again. Okay, so once you have it cleaned up, you may also wanna check your bobbin case to see if you have some little random piece of thread can be causing your problems. Here's my little duster. I have a little duster, Elise steals it all the time. Ugh. I have this cute little, oh, here it is. This is what she steals. This is a pipe cleaner, but they put it on this, on this stick, but it's just a, a looped piece of pipe cleaner. This is great for cleaning out any dust. Look, one little piece of thread. That can sometimes be your culprit. So just clean that out. You shouldn't have to take the whole thing apart unless you're, you know, constantly having troubles and you might want to take your needle plate off and take the whole bobbin housing out. Rethread that. Okay, we should be set now. I'm going to put this back. However, I, I'm going to back up my stitches all the way to here. So here, oops, needle plus minus button. I'm gonna go minus 10 stitches until my needle moves to the spot where I want it, which was there. Okay, let me back up again. Okay, so that's where I want. Hit okay, lower, let's start over. Nope. Why are you not happy? I wonder if my presser, sometimes if the presser foot height is too much, then things don't stitch right. I've done, oops, see I didn't cut. I've done that before where like I've done a thick project and then I went to do a regular project and I forgot to move the presser height back lower and nothing stitched out right because of that. So let me do that and see if that's the problem. It's a little bit too high. I'll do point one. Back up my stitches. Oh wait, no, my top thread is not done. We all seeing all kinds of fun stuff today. I usually have no trouble with this machine at all. It's because I'm because I'm live. All the things happen. Okay, pulling through. Any thread. Back up some more stitches. And let's go. Now everything's nope. No bobbin thread. Oh, this is fun. 
I see it's just going with it, the bob, and it's not catching it. All right. Rethread the bobbin. See, a six minute project. No, eight minutes. This is what I do. I turn it into forever. Okay. Fingers crossed that was the last hiccup. All right, back up all the way to that spot. Now you're happy? Okay. <laughs> there we go. So it went around twice to make sure these stitches are nice and secure. So when you turn it, right side out, nothing's gonna come undone. All right, so that is it. Oh my goodness. Where's my scissors? For our bunny bag, so now let's fix it. Up, okay. All right, I probably missed a whole bunch of comments during that. <laughs> I can't see the comments when I'm over by the machine. But this is what it looks like when it's done. Hopefully you don't have all those little hiccups like I had, but to be honest, that happens a lot. So to be able to troubleshoot them, keep playing around, don't give up, don't unhoop anything, just clean up, you know, nesting or funky stitches as best as you can, um, clean your thread path, rethread things, clean your bobbin case, do all those little things until it stitches right again. I think for me, I raised my presser foot height a little bit too high. That has been a problem for me in the past. Like I said, like I've, I've done this project and then, you know, later on today, I'll go stitch something that's super flat and I forgot to lower the presser foot height back down. It stitches all funky. So that's happened to me before. All right. So this is done. We are going to now take it out the hoop. Okay, and the first thing we can do is tear the tear away. So it should rip right at the stitch line, no problem. Now there's gonna be one spot, I think here, where you might have a connecting stitch from that first right here. Um, this, you see this here? This is not actually stitched to your minky. That was your placement stitch on the first one. It's just to the stabilizer. So you might need to trim. See how it's kind of stuck right there? You might need to trim that little piece. And then I can pull all this away. Okay, right here on this ear too. Because it's stuck to the stabilizer on that spot and not the, the minky. Okay, so once we have all the stabilizer, then we could actually trim out the bunny. And so you want to go, I guess, about an eighth or a quarter of an inch um, outside the, steam, the stitch line. So you don't want your seams to be super bulky. So I need this to be flat, so I'm doing it right. Okay. Now, 
here is where your hole is going to be. So there's no stitch line here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a slit to about right here, like a V with my cutting of the outline, kind of same thing happening. So I'm gonna cut down here. I'm gonna cut a V to about there. So you see how I went below? And then go down this ear close to the stitch line. And then I'm gonna make that V. So that's gonna be my opening um, for my bag. And like, that's what I was talking about earlier. That's gonna be your raw edge. But it really doesn't get, have this all folded, okay. It's only gonna get, you know, when you're putting your candy in and they're getting it out, it's not a big deal that it's raw. I keep saying I'm gonna get some good scissors and I never do. Big scissors, I got good little scissors. But I don't have good big scissors. Okay, so once that is trimmed, we have that, we have our hole. Now we can turn it right side out. And if you're having trouble getting it through, then just make that little slit bigger. And that's why it's important to have those seams on either side of those ears be nice and strong so you don't rip that when you're pulling it the right side through. Okay, there's the bunny, and now we need the ears. And I was able to do all this with my fingers, but if you have like a, you could take like the eraser part of a pencil and and push this or like a wooden chopstick. Um, I also have like a bag turner, those kinds of things might be helpful um, for you. So get all that pushed. And there is our bunny bag. So remember I still had some water soluble topper um, stuck to the name there. You can use some water to, um, to try and dissolve that. You can also use some, um, some tweezers and just kind of pick it out. But let's see, I have a tail. All right. So that is it for stitching the bag. And now it's ready for candy. So let's see. My other bag I left with stuffing. <laughs> but I went and raided candy from the pantry to see if I need to make this hole bigger or not. It will the candy actually fit in it the way I did it. So and that's when you can just go trim it a little bit more. You can fill it up with jelly beans. You can fill it up with Starburst, bubblegum, any kind of candy, or chocolate that's wrapped, Hershey Kisses. I got a whole arrangement of candies in my pantry. So I put all that in there. And then once you get enough of what you want, it could use more, but I'm gonna stop there. And then you take your ribbon. Now I have lots of different rib ribbon in my craft room. Most of my ribbon is this size, but I found, and what size is this? This is like five eighths probably. Um, with the small bag, I didn't like this bigger ribbon um, with it. I thought it was too, too thick. So this little teeny skinny, <clears throat> this is probably an eighth, I know a quarter inch, <clears throat> quarter inch. Um, this worked the best. 
for tying the little ears on the on the five by seven bag. Make a little bow. <clears throat> and you're done. But this one can use some more candy to fill it out a little bit better. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I love this. It's so cute. And what's even cuter is that after Easter's over, you can put some stuffing in it. <clears throat> and then they can have it as a little stuffy for their bed or their dresser or a shelf or something like that. But I really like the lighter minky. The colors pop um, a lot better on it. But And I also like the smooth minky. But the little bubbled one is cute too. So that is today's project. I know I probably missed a ton of questions. So let me <clears throat> pull that up. All right. I hope y'all like today's project. I think it's cute. All right. <laughs> Okay, Sandra says, totally filling those with jelly beans and sending to her grandson. Yay. Um, <laughs> Linda's like, I need a big hole for some Reese's. Yeah, like Reese's eggs and stuff. Yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to need a bigger hole. <laughs> um, Betty X, where did I get the pipe cleaner thing? I think I got it from um, a little quilt shop. I think it was all stitched up by Angela. I think I got it there. but. It's, it's just a pipe cleaner. So if you, like I buy, I have bags of pipe cleaners in, in my closet for the kids. They love like making all kinds of stuff with it. So if you just loop one, you can clean out. It's great for cleaning out bobbin cases. <clears throat> um, let's see. Yay, glad everybody likes it. Let's see. Patty said, I had the tearaway pull up and mess up my embroidery just the other day. I've been broadening for only 10 years and that's never happened. Yep. Same. Same here. <laughs> I can't say it's never happened to me before, but it happened. What was that? Wednesday when I stitched this out, <laughs> it, it, uh, it pulled away, but I was able to patch it and save it. So I'll, I'm doing everything I can to save my project. It is very, very, very rare when I scrap a whole project and start over. Um, cause I will find a way to fix it. Uh, Angela has a, a good point. A rotary blade might work well for cutting this out. So if you, instead of me, like I was struggling with my scissors and trying to hold it flat, just having a rotary blade go around. And I have one of those little tiny ones too, that would probably work well. It's like, I have a big one. Oh, I got to show you something I got too. And Branson bought, I don't know where my little one is, but I have one that's like a little teeny tiny rotary blade. So when we went to Branson, we stopped at like an antique market kind of place and they had a woodworking store where the guy, he turned wood and they had all kind of wood and stuff um, in there. The kids got some toys, but they had a sewing section and they had things like this. I got this one from, do y'all know um, Becky from Power Tools with Thread? Um, she has a YouTube channel, excellent YouTube channel. I met her and her husband at a show and her husband turns wood and he made, I'm messing everything up. He made me, he gave me one of these. He makes these, they sell them on their website. Um, this one's a beautiful blue kind of swirly epoxy, but one end has a seam ripper and you can turn it around or you can store it. And the other side just has a wood, a metal stiletto and you can do that. So he had stuff like that in his shop and a lot, I had most of it, but something I didn't have was a little seam roller. So I bought this pretty hand turned wood steam roller. So that was, this is my souvenir from vacation. <laughs> Made me think of that. Okay. Um, the stiletto. Okay. The stiletto, my little blue clover stiletto. Where it is? Over here. Um, I got this. I think they sell it on Amazon and Sewing Machines Plus. It's made by Clover and it's just a little blue stiletto. One side is silicone and one side is pointy. I am almost positive I have a link for it down below. If you get it from Sewing Machines, anything you buy from Sewing Machines Plus, if you use coupon code Carly Bell, it will save you an extra 10% off. Works on everything except machines. Machines, it won't, the coupon code won't work. 
But if you call my friend Jean, so like if you like the Stella Air and that's something you want to get, or you're looking, you know, for any kind of um, sewing or embroidery machine, um, my salesperson's name is Jean. She's super nice. And she helps all of my um, friends get the best deal on a machine. So uh, down below is her direct phone number. So that's the sewing machines plus phone number. And that's her extension. So you can get directly to her. Um, so tell her Carly Bell sent you, tell her what you're interested in. She's going to help you get the best deal, best financing, and she'll apply my coupon code to anything that she can that you get with your machine. So definitely, um, give her a call, um, if y'all need anything. Okay. I'm checking the chat. Mm, do -do -do -do. Yeah, Jill was saying she had some nesting issues too this week. Um, so Wendy says, so if I haven't turned on my machine and in brilliance in a year and a half, will it update all the missed updates at once? Yes, it will. So if you have version 1.5 something, and now it's 1.76, I think it was, it will change your older version to the newest one. So it will do all the updates that it's had since then. Yes, and that's all for free if you've already purchased any of the Embrilliance programs. All the updates are free. Let's see, ah, Linda brings up a good point. So I've seen people purchase Embrilliance on Amazon. Amazon does sell Embrilliance, but Personally, I wouldn't buy it from Amazon. I would buy it directly from Inbrilliance. And there's a couple reasons why. Um, Amazon is going to physically mail you a little piece of paper with a serial number on it, if, if that's right. And they, and back in the day, they used to mail you a like disk to install the program. But that disk is probably way outdated now, right? When you can go and download the newest version from their website directly. You can also purchase whatever program directly from their website. And what's great, if you're like me and you're constantly changing computers and forgetting your serial numbers or that don't want to lose that paper, um, when I log into my Inbrilliance account, it shows me all my past orders when I made them, and it shows me the serial numbers for all of those programs. So um, the other day, when I'm, I'm making the videos for my essentials course. So it's just on essentials. Um, I didn't want to confuse people by having all these extra buttons that I have because I also have stitch artists and enthusiasts and alpha tricks, all those things. I didn't want to be, I didn't want it to be confusing in the video to see things on my screen that maybe you don't see on yours if you just have essentials. So what I did was I took all of those extra programs off. I took the serial numbers off. And so when I opened my program, I only had essentials. And then the other day when I'm, you know, working and, and digitizing and playing with alpha tricks, I just went back and added those serial numbers. So same thing for like my computer died a couple years ago and I got a new computer. Um, I just easily went and downloaded the newest program, signed in my account, got my serial numbers and installed it. And I'm back in business. Um, you can install it on as, as many computers as you need to. Um, so over you know, the past, how many years have been, I haven't been doing in brilliant since I started, but I've been broader, I've been embroidering for um, 11 going on 12 years. I probably switched to in brilliance, um, nine years ago. I've gone through several computers. <laughs> um, so I've, I never had any trouble with putting it on my newest one. Um, so I highly recommend buying it from in brilliance versus Amazon for that simple reason. So Linda, I hope you can find your paper. Um, one option for you is look in your order history on Amazon, see if it maybe is in there or contact Amazon and see if they can help you with that. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so Kathy asked a question. So with the Stellar 2, and also with the Stellar One, if you have the older Stellar, um, does it have the feature where you don't have to take the embroidery unit off to sew? Yes, it has that feature um, on both the newer and the older model. Okay, so that's as far back as I think I'm gonna go. Let me go back to the newer comments. Um, 
Oh, thank y'all um, for saying hit the like button. I'm not a very good YouTuber. When Elise is here, she's at school right now, but when she's here, she usually comes in and is my little hype lady and like, give this video a thumbs up and Abigail when she was little. <laughs> so thank you. Let's see what else. Yay, uh, Becky says, love Becky Thompson. I got a Keith Ripper, yes. <laughs> yeah, they were so nice. I met them um, last year. And if if I do go to Biloxi in, what is it, April, they have the Everything Embroidery Market. Um, Abigail has a school event that weekend, so I didn't sign up to teach or have a booth there. But I might be able to get away for one day just to go attend it. Um, and if I do, hopefully I'll see them again. Um, let's see. All right. So I'm just checking to everything. So y'all are happy. Good, good, good. I'm glad y'all liked everything. Oh, wait, let me take this phone number off the screen here. Okay. So that's it for today. We have our cute little Oops. bunny bags. Um, if y'all make these, I want you to take pictures and post them in my Facebook group. So if you're not already a member of the Facebook group, um, it's the, the general Carly Bell beginner machine embroidery. It's free. Um, it's a lot of fun, a great community of people. It's a great place to go to ask questions. So like if something happens like the nesting on my, on my machine today and you don't know what to do, go post a little picture, a video, what your problem is. They have so many wonderful, helpful people in there that will, that will help you know, get through troubleshoot with you. And then I, I go in there as much as I can and help answer questions um, as well. But it's also a fun place to post pictures of things that you make so we can all see them. So if you make some, go post a picture in the Facebook group and tag me in it. Or if you post on Instagram, tag me there too. Um, but that is it for today. I don't think I have some other projects I'm going to be working on. I got this little thing. So I went, you always see those like people posting all the cute things you can get from the dollar store or the dollar tree and in projects. So I went to the dollar tree the other day with the girls and they had these cute little bunny baskets. So I got three of them and I'm going to um, add names, I think to the top. Another cute place for this bag would be to add the names on the ears. So if you have a flatbed machine and this is too complicated, you could float this on your flatbed machine and put the kid's name on the ear and like the year on the other ear. That would be super cute. So I'm gonna play around with these. I'll take little videos um, of stitching them and how they come out and I'll post them. I do the, um, the stories the, on Instagram and Facebook. I'll post them on there for you. And then I also got these cute little fuzzy bunnies. So what I was thinking with these is not embroidery, but sublimation because these, these minky, something to keep, oh, that's, the, we could take this to a whole nother level, guys. <laughs> minky is 100% polyester. Sublimation loves 100% polyester. And sublimation print is so you print it with the special printer and the special paper. I got a brother one. It's awesome. Um, and then you heat press it onto polyester. And it takes it and the colors are super vibrant and it like infuses with the fabric. Um, so it's not like vinyl where it's just sitting on top. Um, it, it binds with the fibers of the fabric. So with this, the little white inside the ears, I thought I can sublimate a name and a year or something cute in the little tiny bunny ears. But if we wanted to take this to a whole nother level, we could buy just white minky fabric and sublimate anything and make our own custom patterned minky. So you can go get like a, a cute little Easter egg uh, background pattern. Uh, Creative Fabrica is a great place to find those kinds of things. Um, just a, a digital paper or a digital background and print it out and press it onto the white minky. And then you can make a totally custom minky fabric and then use that minky fabric to make your bunny. So yeah, we could take this to a whole nother level if <laughs> we combine all the different crafts um, together. But these are the things, sidetrack, I got from the dollar store. I'm going to play with these this week. I'll take little videos when I do it, and I will show y'all. Uh, oh, the other thing I want to show you, these came out super cute. Abigail is going, my oldest daughter, is going to her first concert. We're going tomorrow night. Um, she is an Olivia Rodrigo fan. 
she's coming to New Orleans tomorrow. And um, it's uh, her little friend and her friend's mom is coming with us. So I made Abby and Maley matching sweatshirts. So I did this with my white toner printer because this is 100% cotton sweatshirt. So it doesn't like sublimation. Uh, so that's when my white toner printer comes in very handy. So I made, so the front, it says Guts. That's the name of the tour and the album and stuff. And then on the back, I got these designs from Etsy, um, is it says uh, Olivia Rodrigo, Guts World Tour, and all these cute pictures. And these are all the names of the songs on her album. So I saw this design on Etsy. I thought it was super cute. So that's their little matching sweatshirts for the concert tomorrow. So I made that this week. And then I don't, I'm going to post a picture later. I made Elise a really cute shirt yesterday. Today was dress up as your favorite book character. And she loves the author Mo Willems and his series of pigeon books. If you have kids or grandkids and know about the pigeon books, they're hilarious. <laughs> and there's a book that's named The Pigeon Has to Go to School. So I found a, a cute design on Etsy, bought it, printed it on the white toner printer, and I made her a cute little pigeon um, shirt to wear to school today. So I'll, I'll post a picture of that later so y'all can see how cute it is. But that's the stuff I've been making in my room lately. Um, but that's it for today. Uh, let's see. Let's. I'm sorry, I'm answering. I'm looking at the uh, the comments. So, oh, Mandy's like, I have some of those. Yep, we're going to make some things, girl. Um, Claudia asked, what kind of machine do I use for sublimation? So um, I can try to remember to post the link after, but I got it from Sewing Machines Plus. It is the Brother Sublimation Printer. It's the only, it's, it's new for Brother. They've never made a sublimation printer before. Um, and they came out with one last year. So it's the only, you can't, you can't mess up if you go to Sewing Machines Plus's um, website, there's only one, <laughs> but it's the Brother brand sublimation printer. Um, and it's great. It looks like a regular little inkjet printer for your house, but it has special sublimation ink in it. And it comes with a small pack of sublimation paper, and then you can buy more. Um, I have a whole sip and stitch on how to use a sublimation printer. It was back with my old Epson one. I haven't made one with the brother one, but all the steps are the same. The process is the same. Um, so if you go back and check either on my website, carlybell.com, or on my YouTube channel, um, and search sublimation within my videos or blog posts, you'll see I have a whole video dedicated to tell you all about what sublimation printer is and printing is and how to do it and how to use it, all the fun things you can do with it. Um, I think I'm actually going to go on Sewing Machines Plus's um, show. They have a live show every Thursday. I'm supposed to do one in March and one in April. And one of those shows, I might um, show the sublimation printer and like how it works and all the cool things you can make with it. Um, we haven't, I talked to Blaine the other day, I haven't decided if we're gonna do the sublimation printer or my brother print Moda, which is a fabric printer. One of those is what the show's gonna be all about. So if it's the sublimation one, that'll be good for you to watch. All right, Patty says, um, can't wait to see the pigeon shirt. I've been, yes, I've been busy, like super busy all week in here. And then um, if you, uh, see my Instagram and Facebook, I embroidered. So Elise's teacher emailed me and said, can you embroider a little burlap bag um, for her, I think, grandson. So I stitched that out yesterday and took a little video of stitching it. But it was a cute little burlap bunny bag. Um, I stitched that out. I made the sweatshirts. I made the pigeon shirt. Um, next on my list is to make some St. Patty's Day shirts because my husband's in a parade um, next week. Uh, New Orleans has every excuse to have parades. We have parades. Um, <laughs> we have two weekends of parades for St. Patty's Day. Um, and I'm going to make me and the girls some cute um, St. Patty's Day shirts. So that's on my to-do list probably for early next week. But yes, all the things. And I'm going to play with those bunny things. My problem is, is actually video doing all of them. That's where I, I, I'm a slacker. When I go live, you know, I'll do all the things. But all the small craft projects I make in between my live videos. I'm terrible at remembering to take videos and pictures and show y'all. So I'll try to be better. Um, oh, I did want to show y'all something because somebody asked me where that little burlap bunny bag was from. And like I said, the teacher provided it. Um, she did give it to me in a Hobby Lobby bag, but I looked on Hobby Lobby's website. I couldn't find it. 
But these are some, oops, I'm digging in my closet. If you, okay. oops, if you are looking for bags, I bought these a long time ago from like a Blanks Facebook group or something. Um, and I have extra that I never did finish. But I happened to look on Amazon the other day. They sell these on Amazon. These are burlap bunny Easter baskets. And they're totally blank. So you can have a lot of fun with these and like applique a silhouette of a bunny. Um, do a really cute design. Um, so these are cute. They're on Amazon. Try to remember to go post the link um, for it after. The only downfall to these is I really think you need to have a machine with a free arm or a multi-needle machine to be able to hoop it and stitch it easily. This is not going to be fun on a flatbed machine at all, at all. Um, maybe you could stitch the little ears on a flatbed. You could put vinyl on the front um, or the white toner printer maybe would take to this um, nicely. But as far as embroidering, I would recommend you have a, um, a machine that has a free arm so that the hooping is a lot easier. But they're on Amazon. They're super cute. I got some with pink ears. And I think they have them with blue ears and green ears as well. So that's something for you if you're looking for Easter baskets to embroider. All right. Okay, guys. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope um, this video was helpful for you and you learned some things and that you go stitch out some cute little bunny bags and show me pictures. Our next sip and stitch is going to be the actual March sipping sip and stitch. I aim to have them the third Friday of every month. I'm hoping to get back on the schedule of doing them twice a month, but right now I'm going to stick with the once a month <laughs> until my life slows down a little bit. Um, so that is the third Friday this month is the 15th. That's what I have on my calendar. Um, so March 15th at 1030 AM central time. Um, we are going to have another sip and stitch and I already know what I want to do because um, I got a new toy kind of helpful tools in my craft room that I want to show you. Um, and it is it's for our friends that have the bigger embroidery machine. So this one is going to be more geared toward that. So if you have a free arm or a multi needle machine, um, this will be helpful for you. But I'm going to show you mighty hoops and the hooping system that you can get for them and how to easily hoop and stitch um, polo shirts that have like a little logo on the upper left or right chest. So I want to make my husband and his friend some golf shirts with their logo on them and their little nicknames on one side. So that's what our next sip and stitch is going to be about how to use Mighty Hoops hooping system and stitching um, upper left chest logos using it and how easy it makes you. So if that's something you're interested in, um, that's going to be March 15th. That's a Friday, 1030 a.m. Central Time live here on YouTube and Facebook. And then as always, it's going to be recorded so you can go back and watch the replay if you can't attend the live. OK. All right. OK, so that's really it. I don't think I have anything else to tell y'all, <laughs> but I hope you have a great rest of your Friday and I will see y'all next time. OK, bye, guys.